Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. Just a note before you start this episode, this episode ended up being a very, very, very powerful episode, a deeply personal and deeply vulnerable episode. So if you are in a position where you cannot sit for a moment to take this episode in, I would suggest waiting until you have the time to really digest the messages that come through in this particular reading. With that being said, I hope you all have a wonderful day and let's continue with the show. Hello, everybody. I hit record right as I was relighting my sage. I tell you guys, lighting sage, there's a, if one thing new I've learned in this great awakening, it's how to light sage because there is definitely <laughs> skill involved. You have to have the patience of a saint to be able to light sage. But before we get started, you guys know Nicole and you know Sarah. We're going to look at the coming month of April. Um, I am, uh, once again, I've blessed this computer in this room many times today, but you can never have too many blessings. So I am calling in Michael, Gabriel, Raphael, Magdalene, Yeshua, the ones that I don't even know that are here, and I don't know your names yet, who are here for my oh. highest good, for our Sorry. highest good. One second. Come under the door. Oh, you're fine. Oh, you're fine. I'll just keep blessing you. Go. You do you, do, you, do you girl. I'm mm. going to ask for all of the beings of the highest good to come in and to protect this space, protect the message, bring, bring about the proper message that the collective needs to hear. Um, if there are any beings that are here, human or otherwise that are not here for our highest good that wish to infiltrate or cause harm you got to go i don't consent i also revoke any permission you think you have to use as an entry point into this so so be it so be it so be it and so it is all right you guys so how was everybody today? I know we were chatting before we even started filming, but how are you ladies doing today? Uh, Nicole, do you know? <laughs> yeah, okay. I'm doing great. I have a lot of energy. I slept good. Uh, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I just feel so much energy and things are, uh, for me personally, I think things are moving in a very positive direction. Yeah, I feel fantastic yeah. today too. What about you, Sarah? How are you feeling? I feel I feel actually pretty good for the first day, first time in a long time. I actually slept and I had a fairly good sleep. I slept like a full eight hours, which is actually huge for me. So the fact that I actually feel kind of rested is amazing. And I have my dark chocolate with me right now. So <laughs> helping to cleanse, you calcify my pineal gland. So I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. But I agree. Like today, it just feels, it feels good. The energy just feels lighter. It, yeah. feels, it feels good to what you're saying, Nicole. I totally agree. Well, full transparency for everybody watching this even though this is going to drop on friday march 31st because this is going to be an april reading which april is tomorrow um, we are filming this on monday the 27th so i'm going to go ahead and say happy birthday to nicole her birthday is on wednesday so by the time this airs she will have already had her her new year her 50th, her 50th birthday oh, happy birthday nicole thank you thank you she's so young i mean we're walking into like I mean, we're all we're all in middle school. We're all we're all middle schoolers. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> compared to the we're all wee ones. I'm really I'm really enjoying this time in my life. Earlier, 
you know, my twenties and thirties, I was like, what the hell am I doing here? Like, this is not my place. And then things started to come together and now it's great. It's wonderful. It's exciting. And I'm very, very grateful and blessed to be here. So every single day, I try to make the most of it. There is something to be said about that. I, as you guys know, I just entered my forties. I know Sarah, you're not far behind me on that. We were born this far. Um, and I'm actually really loving being 40. I was kind of panicked about it, but I look back, I definitely don't want to do my twenties again. Um, my thirties were great, but I learned so much and I'm, I'm glad I went through, I don't want to do those lessons again, but they were really insightful. So I'm, I'm happy to see what the forties have to bring. Um, you know, so, so I, I, and and we are supposedly going to be living a lot longer. Those of us here on the spiritual journey know that death is just an illusion anyway. Um, regardless of whether you're changing bodies or whatever it is. So, so it's, but it's still, I love birthdays because that's a chance, not just for the person who's has the birthday, but it's a chance to like celebrate that person's life and the impact that that person has on you. That's how I always see birthdays. Like I love my friend's Mm -hmm. birthdays because it's a chance to celebrate them and the impact they've made in your life as well. And so, um, and so I always felt sorry for the religions that didn't celebrate birthdays. I thought, what a shame, like the Jehovah's Witnesses, like what a shame. You know, yeah. like that's, that's, yeah. um, that's kind of sad. So, so if you have not told for the audience watching right now, give Nicole a little, some birthday love. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And Air, you're, you're Aries cusping Pisces, right? Yeah. I'm telling you guys yeah. like Aries and Aquarians. Well, and Sarah's you're a Leo, right? I'm Leo. So you're fire. My rising is Leo. So fire and air, man. <laughs> oh, it's a good combination. It goes up in a fire tornado. <laughs> it does. It does. <laughs> Aries are so much fun. Like Aries and Aquarian. Like you guys are so much fun. I Bryce, was- Bryce goes, wait a minute. You're an Aries. Oh, we're going to get in so much trouble when we party. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. I had a roommate in LA who was an Aries and he was gay. So there was no like none of that stuff going on. But it was like, I was like, we're going to, we're going to get arrested. Like we, we got to stop. <laughs> <laughs> um, but Aquarians and Aries in that other intimate relationship is also good as well because there's a lot of spark with the air and the fire. But anyway, uh-huh. I digress. I digress. It also has a lot to do with other planetary stuff too. But you know that the 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 planet the uh-huh. uh, the zodiac you were born under. Oh, and an orb just went by me. So I've been uh-huh. seeing that orb a lot today. So anyway, uh-huh. um, I thought what we re- would do for today is we're going to look at April. And you guys know Sarah's been coming on the channel to do her tea leaf reading for the monthly. And I asked, Nicole is a brilliant oracle uh, reader as well. And so I thought we could kind of compare notes on this. And so um, I don't know how you guys want to do I don't know, Sarah, if you want to go first with that. And I want to remind everybody, I know you got to boil your tea. I think it's so cute. So Nicole, she has a tea set right there and she like turns it on. It's so, I love it. It it reminds me of my grandfather because my grandfather used to make pancakes and we would spend the night. I think I've told this story before. (laughs) Yeah. But instead of getting up and going to the kitchen, he had like this little stool and he plugged it up. (laughs) He would just make it at the table and then throw the pancakes to it was only for his, only for the grandchildren when we spent the night would he do that because we didn't get pancakes from our parents they had to be like the conscious healthy people that's that's why grandparents are great right grandparents mm-hmm. get to spoil but he would just sit there and like <laughs> it was like all oh, <laughs> <friends Thank there." laughs> <laughs> <laughs> like spoiling like, <laughs> that's awesome oh Bree just walked in by the way I didn't jump Bree just walked back in mom mom Heather is back and Bree just walked in so if you see the camera Heather, moving it's because of Bree it's fine thank you and I, I want to remind, go. as Sarah's getting set up, I want to remind everybody that we are doing a collective reading. So this isn't a specific reading. We don't we don't do divination on any specific people without their consent. No, never. So this is just a, a general reading for the collective for whatever spirit, God, whatever you want to call it, wants people to know. With mm-hmm. that being said, just to clarify, there could be messages in this reading for you specifically, but there could also be messages for other people as well. So if something doesn't resonate with you, leave it. Just leave it. Yeah. And, you know, that, and there could be nothing that resonates with you for this month, which you know what? Absolutely. Sometimes no news is good news. So yeah. that's fine. You know, so so just uh, just as it is, there's no one specific we're looking at here. It's just a general collective reading. Um, again, take what resonates, leave what doesn't. I will say that last week, I believe it was Friday, 
Pluto uh, moved out of Capricorn and moved into Aquarius. So that could also be a huge reason why we're feeling a little bit of a relief today because um, oh. entrance of the age of Aquarius. Oh. Ah, interesting. So that would make sense. This means uh, with Pluto leaving Capricorn, this means that a lot of the fraudulent businesses, we'll say it that way, since we're on YouTube, will start to crumble. Yay. Golden Age of Miracles. Here we go. Golden Age of Miracles. Yes. So I don't know, ladies. So, um, Sarah, do you want to go first with the with the tea or? Sure. Whatever you like to. What I'm I'm open. Whatever. Um, Nicole, would you like to go first? Do you want me to go first or? It doesn't do matter. That? Like I'm good. I'm good. I, I'm I'm still shuffling my tarot deck, but I've got my dragon cards ready. If you want to start with a little dragon read. Will that work okay. while you're boiling the water? Would that work for her to go ahead and do the dragon read? Oh, yeah, absolutely. So I, I'm just getting the water ready. So you go ahead okay, and do cool. the dragon reading if okay. you like. And then I can okay. get the tea ready here. So when you, while you do that, I can get this ready. Awesome, okay. awesome. So the, this jumped out when we were talking about fire and water. Fire dragon. Dominance mm -hmm. card. And it is believing in yourself, believing in yourself. And then <clears throat> trust, see if I get this in the show, trust, love, and friendship. All of these cards are super beautiful. I love the artwork on them. And the messages and the meanings are amazing. They also have constellations associated with each dragon and each card. So I'm going to, um, I will actually read also from the book. It's, it's got really great messages. <laughs> I literally just told this to Bryce. Okay. <laughs> Going with the flow. Going with the flow. And time. This is a, uh, this is hard to see. This has got my Delphinus constellation on there. So um, I'll just read this real quick um, for the dominance card. I think that's probably the one that will do the, get the best. The constellation is Andromeda. Yeah. Wisdom of the Herald is shed all self doubt as you sit perched upon a throne of strength and know your place with a sly smirk. You have things covered and you are the captain of your own ship. The wisdom of the dragon in any given moment, fire can rain down from your powerful jaws and let the world hear your roar. Seize and lay siege to the entire kingdom with a single swipe of your claw. Dominate every given situation. You are mighty, powerful dragon. Now roar. And the invocation is... Um, Never slouch, never doubt, puff out your chest and raise your posture up higher and higher. You can do this. You must believe in yourself and then exert the power outward. Find your inner streak and never back down. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. And that's the card that jumped out. Like that's the message that wanted, wanted to be really shown to the collective as we were talking about fire and air. And all that was those. very significant to me too. I felt like I was being called out there. <laughs> yes. And the time, the time card, that's just a direction card. That's like whatever you get when you do your pull, this dragon deck has these direction cards. And so to get time, it's saying you have, you have taken the time to realize your power and now it's time to act on it really. Yeah. That's beautiful. We are very powerful. Yeah, that's part of this great awakening, right? Like we, I've talked about the intel that we take in is the EDO. It's just the catalyst. The gnosis, the inner knowing is the spiritual. So if you haven't awakened spiritually, then you're not a part of the great awakening, right? Yeah. And I would say too, that those that feel so frustrated about wanting answers have that this is your moment. Stop being frustrated because you're not getting the answers from the people that are, yeah. you're listening to. You, it's time for you to get the answers yourself. This this is your frustration with yourself. Like look inside, 
do your research and realize what it means to you. Like, what does this actually mean for you? It's not for someone else to decide that. Yeah. And you, and as the law of one says, like, we know 50% of the population are organic portals, so they don't count. So the rest yeah. of us, you, there's no new souls on this planet right now. There can't be because of what's happening. It ha Every single person on this planet with a soul, a souled person is an old soul. So you got this, boo. Like, you, this ain't your first rodeo. Right. It's not even your second rodeo. Mm -hmm. No, like this no. ain't your third. This is like your ten thousandth rodeo. Like is, <laughs> you got this. Like stop that's panicking. Why, that's why we're here. That's why we're you here. You're picked to come. The law of one states that there were many souls lined up wanting to come to Earth for this experience, and Source said, "Nope. These are the souls we need to do this because they're the ones that can do this." And so, if Source Creator had enough faith in you to put you here in this battle then it's time for you to have that faith in yourself. Absolutely. I totally agree. Totally. And I love how I love watching Sarah set up because it's so, it's so fun to watch you set up because it's so different than what we normally see, right? With divination. It's just so freaking different. It's awesome. I'm off my own little world. Like I'm listening to what you ladies are saying, but I'm like, Oh, oh wow. I love the, the teacup look. upside down. And, <laughs> like, and she's dabbing it. And she's so methodical. I love it. It's, <laughs> You should see videos of you. What are those videos of people like eating cupcakes? What do they call the sound where people get attracted to like watching people eat the sound of eating or right? And I can't remember. There's a certain type. You should do that. Just videos of you cleaning your, your you would probably be like a YouTube superstar because it's so like med meditative to watch you do. <laughs> Thank you. That's really sweet. I'm like, I'm just like in my own little world. I'm like, I'm listening to what you ladies are saying. I'm just like. I love it. Concentration. <laughs> Sarah and y'all, Nicole is from the South too. So when we talk about tea in the South, it's some cold ice sweet tea. So we're not used to like the, the fancy hot tea. And I'm I, I, I've said cup. The, sorry, sorry, Nicole. The little bitty cups. I see the little bitty teacup and I'm like, what am I doing with that? Yeah, we have big old glasses, big old glass, tea glass. <laughs> Yeah. I use mugs. I mean, you can use the, the the fancy teacups, and I do have them. But I just I like my mugs, and and I and I've said this before, but it's true. Like I'm a coffee, like I love coffee. I have my coffee over here. I I I I, I don't even really drink tea. I only drink rooibos tea. So it's actually pretty funny that I do tea leaf reading because I was about to say God has a sense of humor. That so sounds like something God would do. Like yeah, we'll make you a tea leader who do, tea leaf reader who doesn't like tea. Oh, don't like it very much. <laughs> I like two kinds of tea, and that's about it. <laughs> Ugh, gross. That's, yeah. I, I think I think God has a total sense of humor, so I totally, absolutely yeah. like that. Is that is something I, our Creator would do? Just a little LOL moment, like <laughs> for sure. And, and I want to, and I can, if I may, stay Nicole. When you were talking about the the fire dragon, about the part about stepping into yourself, empowerment, and stepping into yourself. I just posted, I'm so behind on my tea leaf reading for my own channel, but I just posted the tea leaf reading for the past two weeks. And I think at the end of it, near the base, which should be heading into sort of like now-ish, it was exactly what you were saying about stepping into, it was like this magical sense of intuition and recognizing yourself and being self-empowered. So when you were saying that, I'm like, well, oh, that's interesting. Because it's yeah. exactly what came through. Yeah, that's another, awesome. another synchronicity. Okay. Yes, yes. That's no, so co cool. no coincidences. No. And Sarah, I must say, you're looking very thin today. I just noticed that. You're looking very thin. Oh, well, thank you. That's very sweet of you. Thank you. Very, I was like, I just noticed that when you're moving. I was like, girls get it thin. Look at you. Good job. Thank you. It's very sweet. I'm working hard at it. <laughs> well, it's showing. So you that deserves celebration as thank well. You. So Thank you. That's something that I've always struggled with. No, always, yeah, but I think just just with everything that's changing now, it just it seems to be that's another transformation that's taking place for me for myself as well. So, no, thank you. And I will say that's nothing to be ashamed of. As I tell people all the time, every single and I want and I'm speaking to the audience watching. If you're someone that struggles with weight issues like that, don't beat yourself up about that. We all have wounds. We all have imbalances. That's the that's your micro work. That's the part of why your soul is refining itself. And like, just because someone like me doesn't have that issue doesn't mean I don't have other issues. Like, it's just it's just so so in any time you see effort being made, 
to course correct and to heal yourself like that deserves mm -hmm. applauding um mm -hmm. i was telling nicole uh before we signed or before we started so before you jumped on sarah that i am starting for next week the octurian an analog and they there's one scene oh, where the guy channeling talks about how he's hearing the octurian but he do, he doubts himself so he's asking the octurian to show himself and the octurian's mm -hmm. like no that's too hard to come down to your vibration i'm just going to change something in the clouds to prove i'm here and i paused for a minute i was like let's think about that let's think about that for one minute that's how hard it is to human yeah. that these beings we mm -hmm. see as being like consciously maybe more in depth than we are i don't want to say superior but more into having more of an understanding than we do it's hard for them to take form in this density so the fact that you're in a human body right now doing this doing the human stuff you have got to give yourself some grace because you and that is why like i had a memory of the angels bowing a lot of people had that memory of coming down to earth and angels bowing it's because we were the ones that were tough enough to be able to be in human form in this moment so when you were in a human body and you were on the battlefield like sarah is and you were also taking care of your own stuff like that deserves a round of applause so i think sarah you should definitely be very proud of yourself for for just doing it and for anybody watching right now who's just taken that resistance and been like i see you resistance and we're gonna make we're gonna take this resistance we're gonna create that friction and we're gonna spark a flame because you are here to do that because you are strong enough to do that i just really want to express that to you guys like stop beating yourself up forgive yourself from beating yourself up first of all and understand that you're a fucking badass yeah. And the other thing I would add to that, if I could, is that we are not the the meat suit that we walk around in. It's no. literally something that we chose to come into in this life to provide us with lessons that we needed to come things that we needed to come to term with. And I say all the time, I'm like, I, I seriously chose this big ass to shove into some pants. Like, really? I did that to myself. <laughs> Nicole, you're so beautiful, though. Like, I wouldn't even say that about yourself. Like why, sweetie? What, what lesson? What lesson am I learning? <laughs> I've said that before because yeah, it's the Shakti, the Shiva, the Shakti. And I'm like, I look at people. I'm like, you pick that nose? Like, <laughs> like really? I know. Sarah's last reading was like a dark haired person with a prominent nose, and I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I love that when she says a prominent. She's so polite. I'm like a big nose. <laughs> nose got a big nose. <laughs> <laughs> she's so polite about it i've been like listen there's somebody <laughs> <laughs> there's no really big nose in here no no <laughs> so yeah so i just <laughs> i, I want to take this moment to celebrate you sarah for that accomplishment for uh -huh. everybody watching right now because yeah Thank nicole you. is right your body is your shakti it's your vehicle and so you're here doing multiple things you're just not here to fight the macro but you're also in the micro as well and so congratulations for everybody who is and i what did i say to you like a couple nights ago nicole i was like damn i'm tired i don't want to put my she-ra costume on and fight battles anymore like so <laughs> i used to watch she-ra all the time when i was little like that's one of my favorite shows isn't that telling because yeah it's like yeah we got it we got to we got to take care of ourselves and do the big stuff too so you know it's yeah. it's um and we look as i always say i keep saying like that's the difference between us and them we look cute doing it yeah we look cute in our sheer costume <laughs> we sure do we look good we look good they it's don't true. it is true because the light comes with from within that's why people on this side tend to look better than the other side it's because it's 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 an indication of the light right so anyway girl i the orb just this orb this orb has been like around me all day i keep thinking it's a lightning bug but i don't know if you guys saw that it just i keep seeing it not just on screen but in my peripheral as well so oh wow that's really cool if you're seeing it visually like from your own eyes too yeah it's, um it, that's one of your fairies that's one of your fairies oh do you, you have, have a fairy, fairy, do you, fairy do you have a fairy key in your place do you have a spot no. where you just put like little stuff for the fairies but we have fairy doors all over atlanta isn't that interesting so really? I always have a fairy keep and it's really just like um, a little bit of greenery, a little bit of grain, flowers and some sparkles. So like beads or I put like a, a charm bracelet in there. And then I just give thanks like once a week. I give thanks for their energy and their joy and their protection because they really do a lot for us even inside and you just normally can't see them. That might be my whole setup back here for them because I've got all sorts of yeah. rocks. And 
yeah, yeah. Up over here. But you just have to say, you have to acknowledge them. You have to say, I know, I know you're here with me. You're helping me, all the things. And I, and I let you live amongst my pretties because they love to live amongst the pretties and the flowers and stuff. Oh, that's hey, boo, hey. Welcome to my home. You can stay here as long as you need to. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's amazing. I know we, we learn more stuff every day, don't we? So yeah, that one little orb has been around all my recordings today. I've seen this sucker just like flying around. So that, that's definitely more uh, fairy uh, activity than normal orb activity. I think. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. Oh, Are you ready to go, Sarah? You got your tea ready? I got my tea ready and I'm so excited to see what you're going to get Nicole when you do your next pull. To, so we can compare and I, I love this idea I love doing this because you can just get more information and validate and corroborate I think this is awesome okay so how long would you like this TV reading to be you want to do the normal 30 minutes and I'll time you sure. okay right. okay so okay, you, I'm going to put yeah. the camera on you now girl okay here we go I'm going to turn up my light here my new ring light so I'm going to be blinded here for a few seconds just so I can see the better Okay. It makes sense, Nicole, that you got the fire dragon, like, right, like, right off the get go, because I also can send you pictures too, Bryce, but if you look here, that's a lot of leaves is the main event or situation because it's like if any as you know like usually when i do tv readings there's usually one main event or i call it one main event or situation like the main focus the main information the main message the main situation that's being referred to in the tea leaves and usually it's like a more of a one it's a smaller line this is absolutely huge and it's taking up a, a third of the entire cup so whatever this is referring to for the month of april Again, Nicole, makes sense that you got fire because this is huge. There's a lot involved. And it's a very unique scenario because usually, like I said, it's just one line. But this is really cool. It sort of curves. It sort of goes on, a, on an angle, which to me is just a very unique situation. It's almost like, but it's very beautiful. It's almost like the, like the Fibonacci sequence because it comes on from an angle and then it curves back in. So I don't know how well it's going to show here. But you can sort of see it curving there. And then it sort of curves around and goes into the base, which I just find very intriguing. I've never, never seen that before. So let's just see what's in here for, for April. Okay. One is common, one can breathe. Okay. So looking at the main event or situation. So for the beginning of the month, it does appear to me. I'm counting here. One. It's again going to start off quite busy. There's likely going to be one, four, five. There's likely going to be five main events or situations or scenarios taking place at the beginning of the month, but two of those are the prominent ones, and those two are likely are um, to have some influencer or some aspect of wanting things to get moving faster or more forward so you may feel like i always like to put the positive spin on it so you could say you feel like you're stuck or stagnant but you want and you want things to get moving and or you're very happy that with that things are calm and quiet and you're happy with that but it's either of those scenarios but it's specifically for two areas and then another three that are slightly less significant but present and then there's a couple other smaller ones so it's just so it does sound like the beginning does start quite quite busily to be honest and the two larger events or situations um, that are quiet do pertain directly or related directly to this main event which i'm still boggled by because it's so big so i like to do an overall so overall uh, there's just going to be a lot happening there's going to be a lot of different events or situations pertaining to this main event so individual scenarios taking place um i think that for the from what i'm seeing there's going to be some surprises but at the same time we we're going to know where we stand with a lot of things it's really it's a combination between surprises knowing where we stand and a lot of thinking and talking a lot of conversations a lot of ideas taking place 
but just basically full on general busyness, whatever the situation specifically is regarding to regarding. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay. I mean, aside from that, also the get go of the beginning of the month, there is a small scenario indirectly related to this whole event that does involve a new beginning, a new thought, a new opportunity that's being contemplated that has not yet happened, which makes sense it's at the start of the month. This really is about climbing and climbing the mountain, something new that is um, being contemplated that results in in uh, taking a leap of faith, going for whatever it is that you want to have, effort being definite effort being made. It re, it re, but, uh, um, sorry involves some kind of knowledge or wisdom. I mean, I see a version of an, of an open book here, so I just say version of wisdom because I could say reading a book, reading books, writing a book, taking a course, teaching a course. Like, there's so many different versions of knowledge or wisdom that you could relate to individual situations. But I just say, just for simplicity's sake, some kind of wisdom, learning, knowledge of some kind, education, absolutely possible with this as well. Um, thoughts, words, ideas. Um, and one, two, three, if we don't get specifically four, likely seven different aspects involved in that situation if you want to get really really into detail about that as well and again this is at the beginning of the month and this is an idea that's being contemplated but at the same time there are two small opportunities that take place as a result directly from that and quite honestly we're receiving a lot of good things too there uh, right after that indirectly related to the whole main scenario i'm just following the line down and we are receiving something very like exceptionally good a lot of happiness um, there's a happy face, and that involves positive movement forward, as well as messages, news, and or information that's regarding regarding that scenario. Again, regarding this this um, education, wisdom, knowledge, open book. But again, there's this positive movement forward. playfulness as well like there's literally someone there's literally a girl who looks like she's playing catch with a with a mitt which i've never seen before that's why i'm saying playfulness okay so looking at the main event So April, so April, so that is I, that is Aries. So there is a fire sign that there's there's a staff or a wand that's being shown here. So for me, that's Aries uh, as a fire sign. So there there that there's that uh, being shown here as well, and that's regarding one certain thing in particular um, as a bonus message. So some kind of action, speed, momentum, things taking place rather quickly. This relates specifically to a scenario where at the beginning of the month we're going to be receiving something very good, and this is in regards to a, a document likely of some kind that involves two different aspects, two different parts to it. And it is a positive scenario. There potentially may be a Leo connection, someone who is likely Leo or the qualities of Leo, I'm not an astrologer, but the qualities of Leo are likely present as a result of that scenario. But it is positive. There's happy faces. Um, and probably I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say for the sake of not being repetitive, I just won't say happy faces again because I'll probably be saying it like, mul I, will, yeah, I will be saying it multiple times. So just know that there's a lot of happy faces throughout here. So there's going to be a lot of goodness that unfolds, I would say, throughout the month. I would say too that just because, and again, this is all this is all for entertainment purposes only. Um, but I would say that based on what I'm seeing, just because there's just so much happening all at the same time, this is likely a small reminder to just pace ourselves because there is a lot happening. So just whatever you need to do to calm your mind, take some deep breaths, yoga, meditation, whatever it is, just to pace yourself, because you are going to be able to focus on this and not really be distracted by too many other things until. I would say almost near to the near to the middle of the month. There's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven likely different individual events or situations taking place as well. Um, but they are fairly short term, so they start at like the beginning, no, around the middle of the month, and then they conclude at the end of the month. So I'm just saying that in case it makes sense to some people, but. Um,
just use the free time that you have. Just pace yourself is, what, is all I'm saying. Do your self cares. Okay, so going down here. Some people may actually be thinking of moving near the beginning of the month. Um, for myself, that's what turtles mean to me. And I see a tur that's what that means to me. So there is a turtle at the start of the month. So again, someone may be thinking of moving. And if so, it does look like a very good scenario. There also may be a letter C, likely the letter C that's involved, person, place, or thing with that. That thought of moving, it may involve a, the letter L as well. So again, person, place, or thing with the letter L. And this is obviously giving us some sense of stability. There's stability regarding that. A small reminder for perspective, glass half full, glass half empty, not acknowledging things that don't need to be acknowledged, like acknowledge what you need to do, but it's all that whole positive thinking message. A reminder that the angels are around us, which I believe is true anyway, but sometimes it's just nice to hear that as a reminder. So I am seeing a beautiful angel up near the top. Another way that you can say that is that there is, that there is angelic uh, help available or a connection with the angels involved near the beginning of the month, and that it's likely related to the move specifically. That's also connected to some kind of conclusion. It's a new opportunity, but at the same time, it is a conclusion. So something is ending. But this involves likely two people and very positive movement forward. It's almost like I wonder if someone's like thinking of taking a leap of faith. Um, there's a lovely horse and a horse's head there. So for me, this is just myself. Horses meaning like going for whatever it is that you want to have, action, vitality, life force, not being inhibited, like literally being unbridled, momentum, going for whatever it is that you want to have. So take that for what you will. There, this may very well involve a partnership of some kind. Yeah. And positive communication between two people regarding that specifically. There also may probably maybe a, a person, place, or thing with a letter Y that's involved. Just looking here. Again, for the sake of not being repetitive, there are many people being shown in here, like a lot. So there's a lot of helpful people. When I see people in TV reading, I always say it's helpful people. So there's just a lot of helpful people involved throughout the month. Now, this close communication between two people that likely, there's a surprise in there. It may involve, uh, a, 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 I don't want to trigger any words, but small individuals <laughs> um and also something to do with the home and our family letter e person place or thing likely a person with a letter e that's involved and that does help to create a new beginning and also the letter m lots of letters letter m gosh it's just a lot of happy faces There's a small, cute little puppy up near the beginning of the of the of the event. So this whole layout. So um, unconditional love, support, loyalty, and commitment, protection, guardianship. All of those qualities are present. That is actually helping to create a very intriguing scenario where there is a lot of um, stability and a lot of protection. Not like we're in danger, but protection is involved uh, that we are being protected and looked after which I think is true anyway, but nice to hear it sometimes. And that also involves taking care of self-care. And the letter J is involved. Maybe the letter letter U. And there's positive news coming regarding, regarding that. And a positive partnership too. And positive and positive news. Good news is on the way. So if anyone sort of wanted to hear um, or feels like we need to know, reassure, hear about reassurance, which I know I do sometimes, it looks like, especially near the start, there's a lot of reassurance. There's a lot of dogs and there's a couple of dragons. 
so for myself like it's so cool nicole that you have the dragon cards i was like oh you have dragon cards because i love dragons i love them and so whenever i see dragons in tv reading i always say like a knight in shining armor times a 10 or 100 or even a thousand like there's nothing that can get past them in, to me so i i just keep seeing that so to corroborate even the fact that you have dragon cards with you today like I'm, i keep seeing dragons in here I think we're going to learn more about our dragon friends the more the deeper we go into this. I feel like dragons have been given a bad rap and I feel like it's Oh, totally. Their time to shine again. <laughs> oh, I well, love dragon. Dragon energy came back in in February, February 22nd. It was oh. a dragon energy portal and that the elementals and the dragon energy has been restored as of that time. Mm. And so people that have that connection and see them and hear them and get, and call them in and use their power that is beautiful just going down here a little bit further there's a few letter j's and there's also another letter s and there really is a situation where um person plays a thing with the s and j specifically that involve and m and and M, that we are receiving really good news, like about the home and our family. And this may be even a possible addition to the family, it could even be some financial abundance that's being present. But it also is interesting because it does involve some kind of getting things organized, but also a partnership too. Um, so from that, like for example, I use this example a lot because I find it conveys my meaning because with tea leaf reading, I have literally the situations could be so different for everyone. But for example, say you open a, a knitting store and you decide to also teach courses on how to knit. Well, that's abundance coming from abundance. So that's an example of what I keep saying. Going down further. Yeah, more, more dragons. Okay, let's pick an area and go with it. Let's go in there. Okay. And Sarah, so, you're, you're at the 15 minute mark. So let you thank know. you. I, I thank you because I'm only up near the top, so I will keep going. <laughs> thank you. Okay. There's also, uh, I know again that we're in this period of time but there's also um, um taurus or aries connection that's being referenced near the beginning of this whole event so that could be timing but i would say likely it's the qualities of that sign or someone who is that sign likely someone who is that sign that's present definitely surprises and they include abundance and prosperity and this is about again messages news and or information coming about home and our family abundance that we are receiving and this involves helpful people likely money um, again, we have uh, someone with the letter N, and this is again uh, uh, an angelic. Angelic help is being shown, and there's also if someone may have had qu quickly um, have had uh, a dog with the letter N that may have passed. This could absolutely be their dog coming through in the tea leaves. I'm just saying that in case it makes N and C in case it makes sense to N C and W in case it makes sense to anyone maybe watching so if so please know that your dog is coming through in the tea leaves which does happen quite honestly and um, we have a letter v person place or thing oh we have another dragon cool a lot of protection throughout this month protection commitment loyalty we have a number seven so take that for what you will no, that's like an es esoteric spiritual and sacred knowledge number i keep seeing the letter w as well so person poster thing like you hear with the letter w and seven and again this this going for whatever it is that you want to have the sacred spiritual knowledge this letter a and v and uh protection and going for whatever it is that you want to have and having having that loyalty and commitment knowing that you're safe as well um a lot of love a lot of commitment a lot of protection a lot of love um, we also have a grouping here with the letters F and S. It could be the letter E, but clearly F and S and E. And that involves someone specifically specifically involving uh, getting things organized in whatever way, shape, or form that may be. Because that could be different for everyone in every situation. But getting things organized. 
number three. There's, I keep seeing a lot of hens and little cute little hens. So there's a lot of additions to the family and or money coming in, like the abundance and prosperity in whatever way, shape, or form that may be. And then as we go down further in the cup, again, huge happy faces. A lot of surprises. I would say by the latter half, in the latter half of the month, we're going to start to see some large surprises in two areas, two surprises specifically, but we're going to see surprises throughout the whole month. And that one, the, one of the main surprises involves working with other people. Keep seeing letter W. Number seven again. Partnerships. A lot of close communication between people. Letter L. Now, what else with the letter L? A helpful individual. This is likely a woman who is connected with the letter L. And this involves um, someone who is likely... Let's go one second. It's very tiny. Okay. Um, it involves a document of some kind that has two parts to it. I thought it was uh, referencing an astrological sign, but it wasn't. Yeah. And going for whatever it is that you want to have. There, there's, again, like there's action, speed, momentum, going for whatever it is, going for whatever it is that you want to have, not being inhibited. Going down further, now we're heading into the base. I would just say, again, just pace yourself. <laughs> it's going to be a very, very busy month. Yeah. A lot of close communication between other people. Going down further, and as we soup into the base. So this is like the end of April, and I would even say the end of April heading into May. What do we have? Much of the same, I would say. It's going to be quite busy, maybe slightly less busy, but still very busy. Um, a beautiful partnership that is beginning to form. More than one, but it's definitely one. Someone with a letter, a uh, person place or thing with letters S and C and R. Possibly E. I'm saying that in case that may make sense to someone, but the E it's not quite as clear, but those are regarding helpful individuals. And again, I keep seeing partnerships. Now par partnerships to me could mean anything from a new friend to a new associate. It could be literally anything, but there's some kind of new partnership that it keeps seeing throughout this entire month and now into the base as well. But there really is a lot of ab abundance and prosperity, new thoughts, new ideas, new beginnings, new conclusions, but the conclusions bring about new beginnings as well as we, as we know. A lot of helpful people. Not seeing any smooching this time. No smooching. Oh, yeah. I was about to say, um, you guys know that sometimes the no team get, get X-rated. They're X-rated. <laughs> they can be. X we love a good X-rated tea reading on this channel. <laughs> no X-rated this time. It's, it's quite uh, toned down from last time. I'm just taking a quick look here. But I am seeing a lot of, again, I keep seeing a lot of people in close communication. So even though there may not be a whole lot of X-rated tea leaves, but there's there are a lot of people in close contact. They're openly communicating. So we could say possible foreplay happening. <laughs> Only you would say that. <laughs> We're getting ready. We're gearing up. We don't, on this, we don't just hop into bed that easily. Like we got to gear up for this. Trust has to be earned. Forgiveness has to be. Earned. How can I even follow up to that? Oh, <laughs> I got caught in my hair. That does happen. That's such quick hair. That is, but only you would say that, Bryce. But no, it's true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not seeing any extra tea leaves. It's just a lot of people talking. So yeah, whatever works. <laughs> But that's essentially what I'm seeing. It looks like heading into next month, there's just a lot, there are some surprises, but there's a lot of people closely communicating and a lot of talking and a lot of surprises. And partnerships, again, it, it, it seems to be sort of, the, the, the theme of this month is, is heading into the end of this month and heading into next month too. And quickly looking around the sides, is there anything else notable to say? Hmm. More of the same, letter S, um, learning, education, connection. Helpful individuals. 
more dragons, so more protection is involved. Stability. Cancerian connection, so someone like who is that sign involved. Or those qualities are, are present. A helpful individual taking a leap of faith, likely. Could also be referencing an, an angelic connection. And a lot of... I keep seeing books and people reading books. So, again, take that for what you will. I mean, I just say knowledge because it literally, again, could, I know I'm repeating myself, but it could literally mean referencing, you're reading a book, you're writing a book, you're writing in a journal, you're writing a dream journal, you are taking notes from a course, you are writing a book. There's so many different variations that could be, but there's some level of knowledge that I keep seeing people are reading books. So someone may be thinking of taking a course or they're teaching a course. It doesn't matter what it is, but there's some form of education and knowledge that I keep seeing throughout this month. And just to wrap it up, happy faces. More, it's more people communicating. So lots of communication. That's what I keep seeing. That's what I keep seeing. So hopefully that TV reading helps some people. Can I ask a question and maybe Nicole can get clarity with the books? Cause this hit me like a, like I was sitting here, I was like, whoa. And this could be just, I mean, like I said, take it, take what resonates guys. This could be just for a select few. The book reading, does this have to do with us ha getting access to our Akashic records? It could possibly be. And I would never say no. Cause when someone, asked, like I may say something, I may see something. And if someone asks me, well, could it be a Akashic record? Could it be this? Could it be that? And I say, yes, absolutely. I don't know. But all yeah. I know is that from what I'm seeing is that there is some form of <clears throat> education, knowledge, insight. So whether it's like at the 3D level of like you're physically like writing notes or writing a journal or writing a book or taking a course or whether it is greater knowledge like that. Absolutely. Because yeah. I'm not God and I would never say yes or no because I would never say no because I don't know. But what I do know is what I'm saying. So I yeah. would say yes. So what you're saying, absolutely, 100%. Could totally be that. And I did get I did get the wisdom card for the dragon draw, the wisdom card. Oh, that's so beautiful. And um, it has a dragon constellation on it as well. Ooh. And I know. And then when you were describing that that big wave coming in and the tea leaves, um, this is what jumped out at me. <gasps> oh, it disappeared. Oh, it just went, it just went, just went away. Yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. You see it? And it's freedom, breaking the chains. And so what does education do? What does wisdom do? Wisdom, it gives you the, the ability to make better choices and gain your freedom. Knowledge is power, right? Yeah. Also protects and knowledge is infinite. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. And and with that, you'll have some grief because people are going to be figuring stuff out. You know, this is the grief card where they're coming to terms with what they thought they knew and what the truth really is. Yeah. But that knowledge gives them the freedom to to make the course correction. Course correction. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Right. And Nicole, you and I talked about this a couple of days ago when you said that the grief coming through, I think that, and this came up in the Sophia Coates day on Aquarius Rising Africa, which you guys, and you're watching this, this will have been Monday. Um, forgiveness, being able to be in a place of forgiving those who have hurt us. Mm -hmm. And that's where I am. I'm at that place of being like, I forgive you. I forgive you. Yeah, because it's, yeah. it's an integral part of every soul's ability to move forward is to forgive we all have to go through yeah. what we have to go through and it doesn't it it only stifles your progress and your growth to just sit there and and relive the pain and relive the trauma and and the heartache to forgive is to release your soul and re to go forward it's not really about the things that happened with other people or not it can be but it's really the power comes in through yourself and that that act of forgiveness frees up your energy so you're no longer in that low vibrational state and you can really benefit from the growth that you're you're doing to work on yourself so i'm really happy that a lot of us are going to get to that point i think a lot of us have been trying to get there but you know sometimes you're pissed and you can't get to that point you just just <laughs> quite yet <laughs> it, took me a while. it took me a while to get to that place and nicole knows and i'm at a place where i can look in the camera and say i forgive you for all the people that 
attacked me, I forgive you. I do. I, that's why I can laugh about it is because I forgive you. Now you've got to forgive yourself. Yeah. yeah. And then we can move forward. Yeah. Yeah. I know there's Absolutely. heavy guilt. I know people feel guilt. I know, you know, and I think, I think a lot of that too, with the book, the knowledge, the infant knowledge, we, we start to realize how controlled we actually are by thoughts. And some of those thoughts aren't our own thoughts and it's bondage. And when we realize we've acted at, we've acted poorly or done something awful to someone that we actually love because we've been mind controlled to an extent to actually have the power to forgive ourselves for doing that. And I've forgiven the people who've done it to me. They, and I would suggest really reading the ISIS key code because she talks a lot about this. You want to take power away from someone, forgive them. Yeah. yeah. You taught me that, Nicole. Like, yeah. So it's true. I will say, Sarah, though, I was texting with Nicole because I was like, I feel like I'm on display. <laughs> 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 she was like, I was like, I'm just gonna sneak under the desk. <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> no, I think as long as we just keep keep doing what we're doing. Sorry, go ahead. Anyway, I was like, I kept texting Nicole. I was like, did you hear that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, very good, very very synchronistic. <laughs> It was oh amazing. Do you want to pull any more cards, Nicole, or do you want to? Uh, I can, I can, but you know, I, I really feel like it's like the same. I, it's the same thing. Like everybody's coming into their power. They're taking their power back. That, that wisdom is coming into play because people no longer feel like they're like untethered. You know, they feel like they're getting their grounding back and they're able to make positive progress and plans where they've just kind of been, sitting, you know, churning prior to gaining their knowledge that they needed to go forward. And that knowledge is different for every everybody, you know, what they needed, what they needed to be able to make that decision, what they needed to be able, whether it's in your home life or in your work or community or faith journeys. <laughs> I'm on, I'm on the faith journey. I can, I can attest for that. It's really like you all, so, sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, I, I was an Aquarius, but we were, we're redoing the ice or the Sophia code, which is my second time around with it. And I just felt inclined like spirit. Maybe it was the fairy that said, read from this. And I opened it right to the direct page that I want to read from. So as you're pulling the, the cards, the cards, Nicole, this is from Isis. This is what you say. She says, you need to say to yourself and believe within yourself. I forgive myself for fearing that I will die for embodying my personal power. I forgive myself for suffocating my own voice to prevent the full expression of my personal power. I forgive myself for dreading an outcome of isolation for living in my personal power. I forgive myself for acts of self-rejection and shaming of my human body that I committed to blatantly resist emb embodying my personal power. I forgive myself for the practice of self-determined confusion to separate me from the aligned actions of my personal power. I forgive myself for relinqu rel relinquishing my personal power to bless, bless others and myself. I forgive myself for the frightening feelings caused by believing my personal power comes from an externalized place other than the God self within me. I forgive myself for the terror of believing that if I access my personal power, I would hurt others and myself. I forgive myself for the self-shaming belief that others have more right to my personal power than I do. I forgive myself for incurring debts of poverty from denying my personal power. I forgive myself for pr practicing of blaming others to distract me from accessing my personal power. I forgive myself for taking refuge in victimhood to defend my limitations and deny my personal power. I forgive myself for blinding my own eyes to the truth of my innate personal power. I forgive myself for every belief and soul contract of self-agreed slavery to anything outside of myself. I forgive myself for the self-rejection of the Holy Spirit within my human form. I forgive myself for self-judgment and doubt that my soul does not belong to me. I forgive myself for the dreadful belief that sovereign power which created me was outside of my true self by the power of my i am presence the god self within me i now summon the holy spirit of my higher self 
to release and dissolve these unconscious beliefs, vows, oaths, and soul contracts from the matrix of my carbon-based DNA. I call forth the Holy Spirit of my higher self to now fill every cell of my body with self-forgiveness and the breath of life. I forgive myself. I forgive myself. I forgive myself. By the power of three, a perfect trinity, it is done. Very powerful. Very Everyone powerful. This. And while you were doing that, I got the wisdom card again. I got the, vi the vision card again. I got understanding, looking at both sides, because it takes looking at both sides to truly forgive. Because even if you feel just total victimhood, you played a part in that encounter. That's why you have to forgive yourself. I've had people ask me that before. Like, why do I have to forgive myself? It was done to me. And the actual thing is it was done for you. It wasn't done to you. It was done for you to give you the lesson that you needed to. So you knew how strong you were. And the, and the direction card that came up is inspiration. This is the third time that cards jumped out today. So I'm going to read that one. Um, it is time to gather and I'm sorry, wrong one. It is time to listen to the whispers on the wind and the deeper energies flowing in every situation for new ideas and creativity that can all be found around you. I am everywhere and nowhere at the same time. Listen to my call and be inspired. Draw from me your new undertaking. I will be available to you in all points, times, and places. I'm abundant energy, just ready to be plucked from the ether. When I strike, often without warning, be inspired. The general of inspiration beckons you to heed the call of source to abundantly creative creativity that is larger than yourself. Draw from the well of inspiration. You will no longer be thirsty. Now is the time to be inspiration and be creative in, in your own life. So a, a lot of the same message energy is going on right now. Absolutely. I'm so curious what this is going to be in April. I'm so curious. So I I kept feeling that fairy around me saying it wanted to speak. And I was going to ask Nicole to actually pull. And the fairy said, no, you. Cool. So I said, he, the fairy said three card spread. That's it. And the last card I got, I had to clarify with two more cards. But I'm going to show you guys. And this, this resonates with me. And it kind of makes me want to cry. Okay. Um, because we're all tired. I'm not going to pretend like we don't pretend this is easy. Like we've, I mean, how many times have I stood out inside and like a bore mission? I'm like, <laughs> Beat me up when you're I, <laughs> I hate periods. I hate cramps. I hate this shit. More smooching. <laughs> more, more smooching. <laughs> no and so i just i i'm listening to what they've said about the wisdom about what the contracts the talking the communication which the forgiveness making amends with people that truly matter to you the souls you know how sad is it that one event can happen where something bad happens and two souls that are supposed to be working together all of a sudden don't speak because of something now i'm not saying if there's abuse you obviously have to put a boundary up but I did a three card square spread. The first card that popped out was the Empress. The second card that popped out was the six of swords, which is coming out of troubled waters. The Empress mm -hmm. is moving out of the hard stuff. And then I got the four of swords, which typically means death card, but I kept thinking it means rest mm -hmm. and regeneration. Mm -hmm. And so I asked, can you clarify this just for me? And the two cards I got were the five of swords and the, sun card so the five of swords is like something worth 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 fighting for you are being rejuvenated resting from a battle that you had to fight and it is going to bring about the sun card the yeah. golden age of miracles yeah and i don't want to say that that is specifically just for women i where it's about the divine feminine and every living thing that's what's been at the state that's why the magdalene you know, I've, I've discovered in my own research as of now that the royal bloodline we're looking at is not Yeshua's. It's Magdalene's. And it's not literally. I'm talking about the divine feminine. That's what's been at war. 
the sacred prostitute is what we're going to call it because she wasn't a prostitute. No. And she is within everyone, even the men watching as well. Yeah. Right? Everybody knows she's my guide too, one of my guides, and I have a direct connection to her. Um, and that she is within everyone. Magdalene is like, she's like the Mac Daddy. And Magdalene means something, right? It's not, she was not from Magdala. That didn't even exist when she was around. Like, that's the controller's narrative. Yeah. She was Magdalene. And I feel like that word in itself, her name is actually a mantra. And I want to say, and maybe this is the fairy talking, maybe it's Magdalene talking, use her name as your mantra. When you are feeling like you can't find your own power, say her name three times, Magdalene, Magdalene, Magdalene. And that is going to ignite that flame of that personal power and sovereign strength. There is nobody that represents divine sovereignty more than Magdalene. Yeah, and, and in energy. line with that, that wisdom from rage in the yes. Magdalene. Wisdom, again, take mm -hmm. all that and harness that power and, and use it for the greater good. Use it for your greater good. Absolutely. I'm actually getting that Magdalene wants to say something. So I'm going to pull, and you guys, do you want to pull as well, Nicole, and yeah. see? Because yeah. now I'm being told, like, there's more girl. Listen, Magdalene's okay. funny. She's an athlete. She's like, keep going, keep going, girl. You're not, you're not done yet. I know you're hungry. You got to pee, but you're not done. Yet. <laughs> Does she want me to use the dragon deck or a different deck? Have her tell you, ask her yourself. That's what she's saying. I'm going to, I'm going to mute so that you don't hear the card shuffling in the microphone. Yeah, me too. Sarah can talk for a minute about. Oh. Sorry, talk about, talk about what? I didn't hear the last part. Sorry. Whatever you want to grow while we shovel. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. I open like, um, no, I totally agree. I mean, and I, I love Magdalene too. And I, I feel like I felt her around more, more recently too. And, and like you said, Bryce, one time, like ask her for a hug. And I did the other night and you can totally feel it. You just put your arms out and you say, Magdalene, may, may I please have a hug? And she does hug you. And it was so beautiful when you said that the other day, because I, I it was one of your videos I saw and I went, I haven't done that in a long time. So I did it again and you can absolutely feel it, but it's true. And, and I'm, I am very curious with all this, all of our beautiful, all the di beautiful divination happening today. Like what is coming up in April? Like the messages are, are very consistent that whatever is coming up for this month, it's, it's, it's huge. And I am, I am genuinely curious. It's like we've been working, 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 working so hard and slugging away and really doing our work and, and whatever way she performs, they are. And then to be embodying the self-power and that open communication with the divine and to see what is on the way and knowing that we are truly enough. And I think that's one thing that we, to what you both ladies were saying, is something that we, I think, it's so easy to forget. Because it's so easy to forget get that we are good enough and then we think we're not and it's all the societal we're program we're not yeah because you go to a, a doctor for medical advice you go to a teacher for this advice you've been told to trust this the experts not trust your own inner self and i got i got a message from magdalene here and i don't know if this is a personal message for me or i'm the collective i'm just gonna give you what i got and every take what resonates so the first thing i got is the page of wands so it's interesting that you saw wands in your mug because wands, this is the Aries deck. So this is the fire. The wands, there's always Aries, right? So for the emperor is the master card of Aries. So when we see the page of wands, the page is always childlike. So we think of it's coming in hot. Like something, this could also be a one night stand, but I'm not getting this with this spread, right? This is like coming in hot, like something fast action. Like it's yeah. just going to happen, right? And then we got the next, which is the six of wands, which is a victory. Coming in hot for a victory which is then going to create change. Wow. I'm so curious. So I, I got, I got the divine feminine deck to pull from. So the first one that jumped out is Diana, queen of the wilderness. The language of the natural world is a frequency of love. And this is my mother tongue. Then the goddess of light. Amaterusa, 
we are all sacred mirrors reflecting back the same light. And the last one is Lalitha, the red goddess. Playfulness is a spiritual power. Laughter leads me back to the light. Order of the red rose. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there's fire and there's light and there's laughter and not taking yourself so seriously. And forgiveness comes with that. Yeah. You get your power back. Get your power back and fire. It's like, that's like, that's spirit. Yeah. Yeah. And that comes in hot. As soon as you ask for it, it's right there. Quantum immediate. Yes. That's that page of wands. Like, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Not slow yeah. and deliberate. It's it's yeah. right. It's immediate action. Right yeah. into mm-hmm. victory, which brings change. Yeah. Yeah. And I think the wisdom that people get has been slowly leaking out, but now it's coming in big. And yeah. so th- now they're having to make that, that aha moment change. Okay. So now I've got the information. What are you going to do with it? What are you going to do with it for the greater good? Now I'm hearing Kwan Kwan Yin wants to say something. (laughs) That's my girl. (laughs) They're all here, you guys. Listen, we got got to take a line here. I'm not a professional reader either, so I'm the amateur reader. No, I do (laughs) cards. I do cards for fun, but uh, yeah, Kwan Yin's my main soul imprint. Kwan Yin, you tell me, girl. What do you want? I guess she wants the cold to pull too. Kwan Yin, what do you want to say, honey? The Queen of Compassion, one of the most powerful key codes you'll ever read in the Sophia Code. Um, Quan Yin, Quan Yin. I mean, look what's under the deck. <gasps> oh, oh, big tower! Moment. Wow, the tower <laughs> divided into. I'm getting told divided into three. Pull from this one. Put the tower again under. I mean, this might be a message for me as well. <laughs> I'm trying to take this real personal, guys. Uh, <laughs> once again, five of swords, something worth fighting for. Oh, page, of, page of pentacles, a new beginning is coming. And you're going to have to be offering of love. The queen of cups is love. Be, be there wow. for the new beginning to offer nothing but unconditional love. Speaking of forgiveness, that's what I took for the message for me is be in that place of compassion and forgiveness in loving in order to move into the new, you fought for what was worth fighting for. You're going to get the new beginning, but then you're going to have to take that loving step. Yeah. Okay. All right. So what I got is our lady of Guadalupe, the Empress of protection. I'm safe and divinely protected and held in love at all times. And then Lilith, the first woman, the voice of my body and soul, I choose the life I desire to live, could not be conquered, could not be controlled. And Akilanda, the goddess of never not broken, everything happens for my liberation. I choose to become only more love. I hope you can see this card. It's beautiful. Oh, wow. Beautiful. She goes from being broken and exposed and burned to a rebirth of beauty. Wow. Well, they say the more your heart breaks, the more the light can come through. And that's what we see with Kuan Yin anyway, right? She was, her story, when she was here on the earth in human form, she had a horrific life. Yeah. Yeah, And um, it just made her the queen of compassion. And in her softness, there is power. Right. Right. I'm dreading when we do the, I'm not dreading it, but I'm dreading it in some ways when we do it on Aquarius because it's a live show. And I did it. I did it pre-recorded so I could pause and clean because Kuan Yin, I cannot. I cried the whole together. time. Yeah, I cried the whole time. Every time I've read it three times and I cried the whole time, every time. I it mean, Kuan Yin is just that she is like, I mean, she's not the grand finale. The grand finale is White Buffalo Woman. But like she is like, get ready. If you have not read the Sophia Code and you're doing it with us on Aquarius Rising Africa, Kuan Yin is the, that is for me. And I, and I think a lot of people have said that. I don't think. I mean, I thought I was going to be more attracted to Magdalene's key code, but I had confirmation through Magdalene's key code because I had seen a lot of the same things that the channeler saw. But Kuan Yin, that was like the tidal wave that just took me. Like it was just unbelievable, Kuan Yin's story. Yeah. And um, and I think she's kind of getting, because even my friend Cindy at Sacred Garden Yoga, she's the one that told me to start reading the Sophia Code. And she said that she, Kuan Yin shocked her too because – you know, I'd known the story of Kuan Yin. I kind of, I think most of us kind of knew who she was. 
And Cindy had said, I'm paraphrasing what she told me, that before the Sophia Code, she always kind of saw Quan Yin as being the meek and mild of all the Ascended Masters. But when she read her story, she realized that her meek and mildness was a sign of strength. It was because she had been, I mean, I think we're further enough in the recording, she had been raped multiple times, gang raped, um, beaten, left for dead, had to live in the wilderness. Um, her twin flame came and brought her back to life. And the minute she was able to trust again, in the beginning, she wouldn't come near him. She wouldn't touch him. She was a very beaten up, broken person. And the minute he restored her and brought her faith back into humanity, he left her. Hmm. Right. And so then she had to go alone with that history. And she, um, Oh, it's just so powerful. It's just so freaking powerful. I can't even, if you guys don't have the Sophia code again, I would absolutely suggest getting it. It's it's it, to me, that's my Bible. Yeah. That's my real Bible is the yeah. Sophia code. Um, yeah. because it's so powerful and it just, it ignites you. And you know, the whole time they're saying you're one of us, like in the book, they're like, you're reading this because you're one of us. Like you're no different than we are. You've just forgotten. So I would absolutely suggest um, everybody getting that to help you move through. And the first key code is ISIS, like I just read from. And she's like, hey, forgive forgive yourself for being duped. So yeah. what, did, what did Mark Twain say? It's a lot easier to fool somebody than convince them they had been fooled. Yeah, that's true. And as for Kwan Yin, I mean, I mean, it makes complete sense that through all of that strife and through all of that struggle and through all of that pain and turmoil, you do... You, you can reach that point, but she also chose, I would assume, like, she obviously also chose to, to be like that. She didn't have to. She could have perpetuated it, but she chose not to. But through all of that pain and strength and all that suffering, you, you do become resolute as well. That also can really, truly help you to create like a sense of strength that, and that you would not have had otherwise, possibly. Not to say that it's good to go through pain and suffering, but through pain and suffering, you can become so strong. And you can learn so much from that. And clearly she did. Passion. I yeah. mean, it, 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 it makes you strong. Yeah. yeah. And you see it the pain in somebody's eyes and you, you know that pain. You understand that pain. Even, I mean, um, Nicole and I did a couple of days ago my, my experience in the slums. And I was just thinking about that. Like you can, obviously I come from a very different life than the kids in the slums in India come from. But in that looking into each other's eyes, there's an understanding of suffering. And within that understanding of suffering, the dichotomy of that, the polarization of that is compassion, you know, and having that compassion. And I said on my channel update video, and I'll, I'll say this again, I, I forgot to say this with, with the video with Nicole, the safe house where the slum kids go, that's also where we store the dogs. So like when we have dogs, we're going to rescue as well, because foundation also wow. rescues dogs and we take them off the streets um in transition for them to then fly out to their adopted families they stay at the slum house or the safe house with the kids they take them in and so the kids then it's kind of they get they get, get to learn how to love on yeah they get to help each other learn how to be cared for to care for the dogs and one one it's one so year we had, a bunch of, we had a bunch of puppies and so the kids at the safe house got to feed the puppies and nurture the puppies before they were due to fly um to the United States for their new homes. So it's this whole karmic chain. And and that's, you know, in Sri Swami, I, I talk about this a lot. His his commentaries on the Sri Swami Sachitananda and his commentary on the Yoga Sutras, he talks about the minute you start to recognize your own soul, you see the soul in everyone else, including the animals, including the trees, yeah. including you yeah. see it. All of a sudden the illusion, all of a sudden you're not like when I see people out there, and don't get me wrong. There's no, there's wealth. It is good to be like having wealth is not a bad thing. In fact, taking a vow of poverty is not spiritual at all. Like being wealth, I'm not, I mean, look at Mr. T, right? Like look how he used his wealth, right? It's not a bad thing. It's just that when people are wealth hungry and they put themselves in a hierarchy of being better than, or they start manipulating for money to be better, to have a power, that's when it becomes a problem. But it's the problem itself isn't with the wealth. It's with the person. Mm -hmm. Right? And so and that's that's the Kuan Yin kind of idea of being able to see into somebody else's eyes. And in that moment, 
understanding the emotional center because as the Cassiopeians say that's how we know our own soul is through that emotional center even though the emotions are found in the senses which are a part of our Shakti our creation they're an essential tool for us to to understand our emotional centers and when we start to go through when we descend into that state of hell only then can we find that the chains of liberation and i want to read i sent this to nicole god i'm getting all this fairy must be really active because <laughs> i'm getting all sorts of uh i sent this i found this i was going through my old pictures and i found a post that i had made and i i had um quoted from a uh, carmageddon which is a documentary and i'll read it because i feel just feel like i need to right now there is a spiritual lesson in all this but not one i expected I, too, was a spiritual bypasser, turning to God as an escape for my unresolved pain body, looking for spirituality out there rather than in here, in my real life, in my embodied experience. The truth is, I couldn't be here now because I was still in the then, the power of then. And now I know why I was so attracted to underground ideas of spirituality. After my childhood, I needed a spirituality that kept me from feeling what lay below the surface. It felt easier to believe that I could ask the universe what I wanted and it would manifest. And by pretending it was all good, it would make it good, even if it wasn't. I was confusing self-avoidance with enlightenment. My repressed emotions are not illusions to detach from. They're actually unresolved spiritual lessons, a karmic field for my soul's expansion. If I want to grow in my relationship to God, I have to drop right back down into my body, raise the feelings from their grave, and do the real work to heal my heart. Spirituality lives inside of our bones and not in our effort to escape them. Here is where we heal. There is nowhere to go, just here. Jeff Brown, Carmageddon, Sutra 1-1. And now the study of yoga begins. Here, always just here. Thank you, Mother India, for giving me here every day. And every day, for many years now, the sun rises. And for me, the study of yoga begins. Always just here, deep within my bones every day. I suffered a lot in my life, but I wouldn't trade this incarnation for the world. The darkness of yoga is the light of salvation. And just so funny, I have 17 likes on it because it's a very old post. Oh. <laughs> of course, numbers. But that is so beautiful. But how true is that, though? And I'm sure you ladies can completely agree. As you were saying that, I was thinking... How many times have I sat in front of a client because of my struggles? I'm so grateful for all the struggles that I've experienced because I can relate to them. Like literally, and I can say, yes, I had spiritual psychotherapy and, I, and all, of the, all of these other things. But I can say that because I can relate to them. And I'm so grateful. Yeah. Because like, even though you, you go through those experiences that are quite extremely difficult at times, like extremely hard, it allows you to relate to others. That's, that's the thing. And you can relate to emotional. <laughs> Nicole, take over. <laughs> well, it's the wisdom, right? The wisdom, yeah. the, the wisdom can only come from a nice, comfortable existence to a degree. And then you have to really experience it. And that's yeah. the friction. And that's the friction that allows you to grow. Yeah. And once exactly. you experience the friction, you have a choice. Yeah. That's yeah. when you're given the, the polarity of choice. And I love how he said that he was using spiritual uh, that spiritual bypassing i don't know how he said it was was not enlightenment but he was a self avoidance was not enlightenment the darkness and and that's what we see a lot when people first enter the spiritual world is they're expecting rainbows and butterflies and that's not and the story of kuan yin is quite literally the example of like no it is dark night of the soul it is like everything and i've told this this story before you know in the traditional yoga practice if you're going to a yoga class to get comfortable you're not going to a real yoga class that the yoga sutras are very clear on this we exhaust the physical body in order to exhaust the emotional and mental body to the point where you you come to a place of honesty and vulnerability 
right? Because when you're exhausted, I mean, think about a little child. When a little child is like what we call slap happy, you know, when they get exhausted, they're at that breaking point where they're just honest and just, you know, they're, they're on their knees, right? And the practice of Ashtanga physically can be at times very painful. It's supposed to be. And David Garig, my original teacher before going to India, always told this story that he asked Guruji, he said, Guruji, is, 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 is it necessary for this practice to be painful? And Guruji said, yes, because pain is real. There is no ego in pain. Pain is real. And regardless of whether you're a Canadian like Sarah or an American like Nicole and me, or whether you're from Africa or the United Kingdom or Europe or Russia or China or wherever, Australia, the Pleiades, I don't know. Wherever you are from, we all know pain. And that's where we connect. Yeah. And if you are a sold person, you can use that pain as a catalyst. You can use that pain to reach your, you recognize it so you reach your hand out to the person in pain. Yeah. And even though that person in pain has to go through that, you can hold them and support them through that. Now an organic portal, good luck, but they won't be coming forward with us anyway. So, uh, <laughs> no. so don't ever don't, I mean, suffering is awful. I mean, I've been, I've been at the point of, of not wanting to be here anymore in my life. I think most people have been at that point. I think if we're really honest, most people have been at that point where they're just ready to leave because it's, it hurts too bad. That's the descend to ascend part of the, the roller coaster ride of, of spirituality, in my opinion. Yeah. You know, you're gonna you're gonna get you're you're gonna hit some incredible lows that you never oh, saw yeah. coming. Yeah. And then Absolutely. you're gonna be so grateful that you were able to navigate through that and find the light and find your power. And and then you feel stronger. You are accomplishing Absolutely. something. And you can help other people because of it too. Yeah, yeah. That, 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 and, that, and that's such a beautiful thing but you know it, it's it's um i think like when i first got into like, spiritual spiritual journey i thought oh this is amazing and like, no and you learn very quickly no it's not all the rainbows and butterflies it's not what you think oh love and light not, not to say love and light is bad no i'm not saying that but you think it's going to be some mystical experience and everything no you go deep quite quickly and you have to really acknowledge yourself because it's really the only way that you can heal is you have to acknowledge parts of yourself and it, and it is a process. I know we've all said this before. It, 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 it is a day by day thing. You don't just, it's not just a one and done. You have to work on it daily and there's always something to need to learn, but that's part of it too is it, it, it is a constant, it is a constant thing. Yeah. You're never going to be, never going to be done. You can't know the light until you've seen the darkness. Yeah. And then you know yourself and then you get to learn yourself. That's right. So we are a little bit over an hour now, ladies. And so that was a really powerful episode. I thank you guys for, um, I feel like these episodes just keep getting more and more and more powerful. Like spirit, we're going to start. Yeah. Listen, one of my really good friends down here in Atlanta, she's this black lady. We've been friends for a long time. And she used to make, she used to talk about black church versus white church. In the South, black church is way more fun than white church. And so pretty soon it's going to be. Yeah, church here. <laughs> white church is very boring people just sit there <laughs> so um so anyway up down, up down up down up down, up down. Like, yeah, so, yeah. so so anyway guys we're gonna get all we're gonna be feeling the spirit i remember one day I, i'll tell a quick story before we sign out i was in philadelphia and i was not i had just left the mysore room because of uh, david's mice room because i we were i was done and he was still in there with some students and i was in the dressing room the la lounge room with his girlfriend joy and all of a sudden we hear him play he has a conch he would play which the conch is a big thing and need to play is you know all of a sudden we hear it and joy kind of looks she goes well David must have been filling the spirit. Like, I, was just, I don't know why he played the cock. Like, in the middle of my room. So, David must have been, we're going to be filling that spirit up in here, you guys. So, anyway, um, I'm going to put all of Sarah's contact channel information in the description box, as well as Nicole's. Both of them are available for private readings. You guys know this. I've done private readings with both of them. They are amazing. And so, if you want to go a little bit deeper into your own understanding, understanding of your the path that is laid before you then i would 
definitely suggest contacting both these girls or separately, whatever, to, to have that guidance because they are both here and have awesome services to offer. So anything else you ladies want to add before we sign out for the day? No, I think, I think there's a lot of energies coming in and I just want people to open themselves up to all the possibilities because every single day that we go through that and we learn some new things, the next day is even more beautiful. I think that's what we're all feeling. Absolutely. I would just say what I, what I'm just getting is just be true to yourself and do what you feel is right. And always forgive others and forgive yourself. That's right. All right, you guys. Well, love you, you both very much. And I love you guys watching right now. And we will all talk to you soon. Bye, everybody.